the original Jurassic Park dinosaur, the Oxygen Destroyer, and more. This is my review for 1954's Godzilla. A D N. It's headphones nail. What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a film review as a bit of a precursor to the upcoming film review Godzilla vs Kong. So I was reading about the film and as it turns out, and I kind of know this, but I have never seen any of the Godzilla or King Kong films. I may have picked up bits and pieces here and there on TV or maybe streaming somewhere or something like that, but I'd never seen the entire film. so. I got to thinking that since I have HBO Max, I would stream the original Godzilla and the original King Kong, take a look at them, see what spawned the original franchises, and kind of do a compare and contra contrast with Godzilla vs Kong once I finish watching that film. So for this review, I am only going to review or share my thoughts on the 1954 film Godzilla. So overall, I want to say that the film was pretty well done, the pacing was very good, the story was captivating for the full 90 minutes or so, so overall for the time I want to say that it was a good film. Of course the things that stand out are um, a little bit, the pacing was a little bit slow, I'll grant it that, but it was a, it's a movie of its time. Um, Granted, the quality is kind of hard to watch at times, mostly because it's in black and white, so some of the details get lost in uh, viewing. And the night shots definitely don't really hold up as well, or at least um, the shots that don't have enough light in them kind of hold up, or don't hold up as being well or easy to see, so that kind of sucks. But overall, what they did, Notably with Godzilla, as far as the creature and puppeteering of it was very well done. So when you're watching it, you, for the most part, it looks like it could have been a really a real monster um, or something that they created at the time that holds up as far as good puppeteering work. There's a few couple of scenes here and or two scenes of note for me that didn't hold up, but for the most part, like when Godzilla is going through the power lines. When he's stomping through the city, overturning buildings and ships and vehicles and things like that, that was all very well done. So for the time, I am impressed. I give that part of the film um, high marks, along with the acting with a lot of the characters. Um, initially, um, my one of the favorite characters I was going to go with was a professor who, who advised that they should study Godzilla, and not try to piss it off, don't shine lights, and don't attack it, because that's only going to provoke him even more, but that transitioned into um, his daughter's brother, I guess, who was a scientist and created the Oxygen Destroyer, so um, he was probably the most eloquent, or while the professor was over, um, he was good at presenting the overarching case for why they should not be attacking Godzilla, the scientist's brother was presented a more personalized case for not doing it as a scientist they shouldn't go around killing this creature and then they should not also use his oxygen destroyer as a on godzilla because if it becomes public or his research and his the actual bomb becomes public then countries are going to use it against each other scientists are going to try and create bigger and worse versions of that bomb so um, I appreciated his efforts in not wanting to use it, but once he saw the destruction, he made it an ultimatum, an ultimatum that he's going to destroy his research and then he's going to be the one to take the bomb because he does not want anyone to be able to duplicate his efforts. So all in all, a very good story and overall worth watching if you have not seen it. So it kind of what makes me want to see the rest of the films. Granted, in general, they're probably not going to be the greatest of films, but um, for me, not having seen any of them and seeing this one for the first time, it kind of makes me want to see them just because if the story is at least as decent as this one was, then it makes it worth watching. 
Um, I think the thing that kind of turned me off to watching them initially was kind of the ridiculousness of the monsters. So Godzilla, I was like, okay, I can deal with that. But once you start getting into the various other ones like Mothra and a few of the other ones, I kind of thought that they or before I would say that they're kind of ridiculous and silly. So for me now, I kind of want to watch the rest of the films to see the progression of Godzilla, his flame, his fire and things like that. Um, and that actually brings me to one of the things that does not quite, didn't seem to quite work was when Godzilla is viewing his fire breath, flame thing, or his radioactive breath or whatever it is that makes things explode. It kind of wasn't, I mean, they did what they could for the time and in black and white, but kind of makes it hard to follow as far as what he's viewing now from his mouth. So that kind of did not work for me, but on the flip side, I do understand what they were trying to do. So I, I'm not faulting them for it, but like on a personal note, it's kind of hard to get behind, but then I'm not faulting them for doing it because they're doing the best they could. But in general, the result of the flame works, so um, that is um, not something that I can really t take points away for. So if I was to grade the film, I would probably give it maybe about a V to B plus um, overall it was good the biggest thing for me that kind of made it hard to watch was a lot of the events took place at night um, like the t Godzilla's attack on the, um, the various cities so that was something I would have liked to see during the day or at least be well lit just to make it something that's easier to watch because in black and white the film does not really hold up and half the screen is really dark so it's hard to see what's going on so it's something that i would have preferred to see in the light but overall it worked um the two scenes of godzilla that did not work for me were when he's coming out of the water it looked like i mean they were doing the best they could for water trickery to make him right look like he was rising out of the water but it looked like they were just lifting him up and then at the end of the film when he dies from the, the use of the oxygen destroyer he basically died just like a fish so um he came to the surface he flopped up a little bit and then he turned over just like a fish would die so that to me kind of felt a little off and silly um it would have been something i'm not sure how they could have done it any better or if um they would have made him i don't know i think it's just because his body was fixed in place with the arms outstretched a little bit that it kind of um looked ridiculous so maybe if the body was limp and like fully straight or something like that or if the tail was moving around and the arms were kind of free moving a little bit to show that he was dying or something like that rather than being a fully stiff body that would have worked a little bit better for me but um that kind of stood out as being a little silly and hard to watch as, or hard to take seriously as his death scene but the actual um mission leading up to that point with taking with the scientist brother and the girl's um boyfriend going underwater to drop the bomb the underwater shots looking at Godzilla and all of that worked in general so I want to say that it that all was well done it's just that that scene that didn't work for me so that's all there is for this particular review so um, the next review is going to be the review of the 19, I think, 33 or 1934 version of Godzilla or of King Kong. So that'll be up in the next couple of days. And then I will watch the 2021 version of Kong versus Godzilla to see how much at this point they're keeping true to the original inspiration of the film. Um, of course, the graphics are going to be a lot more improved and better and all that, but to see kind of what they um accomplished over the um now almost 90 years since king kong and i th want to say about 70 75 years since um godzilla so um so yeah look out for the next review being for the original version of king kong and that one looks based on the trailer like it's going to be a lot of stop motion um and a about 15 minutes longer than this one so i'm kind of hoping that one is a little bit more well lit during the day so we'll see how that one holds up but that's all there is for this per and actually before i round out the one thing i do want to also give them points for is all the scientists with the professor that they mentioned with the um with 
um, Godzilla being potentially created during the Jurassic period, the crustacean that they found um, under his feet with the sand and all of that. So I liked all of that research that went into the um, first half of the film and it definitely built into the second half of the film when Godzilla goes crazy. So overall, a well, like I said, it was a well thought out film, well produced, um, good to watch. So it, the hour and a half goes by pretty quickly. So the only thing that stands out is really the black and whiteness of it and the um, hard to see colors at some point when it's at night. But when it's well lit, it's fun to watch and easy to watch. And when they're talking about all that back end stuff and the character development, that all generally works. So that's all. So as I mentioned, that's all there is for this particular review. So look out for the King Kong review coming soon. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can get support the show by visiting the Patreon, patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next